Okay, welcome. This is for Biology 210 at Aiken Technical College. I'm Mrs. Colley. We're going to be looking at some structures of the skull in preparation for your practical exam. Let's start by looking at the sutures of the skull. Coming across the top like a crown or a tiara is the coronal suture. Splitting the cell, the parietal bones, right and left, is the sagittal suture. At the very back of the skull, outlining the occipital bone, is the lambdoid suture. And then between the occipital bone and the mastoid bone is the occipitomastoid suture. You see they're nicely outlined in a dark yellow color. And then outlining the temporal bone along the side is the squamous suture. Okay, let's name some of these bones that we view from the external portion of the skull without taking it apart. We look from the side, we see the frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, occipital bone at the very back, zygomatic bone, that's your cheek bone. We see a little portion of the sphenoid bone coming up on the side. Sphenoid runs all the way under the skull to the other side. From the face, we see the nasal bone. Once again, there's the zygomatic or the cheek bone, right and left. We see the upper jaw, which is the maxillary bone. It's got your teeth running down the center of your nose, providing the base for the cartilage, is the vomer bone. We see from the very side where the hole is, that's the lacrimal bone, lacrimal. Directly behind the lacrimal is the ethmoid bone. At the front of the skull, part of the frontal bone between your eyes, the flat spot in the very center, is your glabella. Right from the side view, we can see the styloid process, mastoid process, and the external acoustic meatus. That's the hole, essentially, going into your ear. And that's going to be part of the temporal bone, outlined by the squamous suture. Let's look inside the skull. So we're looking down with the calvarium removed. And the major structure that we see here, foramen magnum, we can orient, jugular, foramen on the side. The bone we're looking for specifically is the sphenoid bone. I'm going to outline the sphenoid bone. All of this structure, all of this structure is the sphenoid bone. There are three specific regions of the sphenoid bone that we need to be aware of. First are the lesser wing of the sphenoid. That's these structures here, look kind of like vampire teeth. Lesser wing of the sphenoid. The greater wing of the sphenoid is all of this structure, like the wings of a butterfly, a little deeper into the skull. Greater wing of the sphenoid. And then this whole middle region looks sort of like a saddle. We've got a crest here and a little dip. This is what we call the cella tersica. Cella tersica is the location where the pituitary gland is located at the base of the brain and it is protected by that portion of the sphenoid bone. In front of the sphenoid bone, this structure here outlined is the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid from the inside of the skull. All right, let's look at the base of the skull, see if we can identify several structures. Very prominent hole where your spinal cord is coming up and attaching to your juicy brain. That's the foramen magnum, large hole, foramen magnum. On either side of the foramen magnum, we have the occipital condyles. Those are going to articulate with cervical vertebra number one, your atlas. When we try to find the jugular foramen, we look at the base of the styloid process. It's the next largest hole in the skull. I'm going to kind of angle this a couple of different ways to see if we can identify the jugular foramen. Jugular foramen right at the base of the styloid process. Also at the base of the skull, we see a portion of the maxillary bone. That's where the upper jaw is. We also see the palatine bones right and left and a little bit of the vomer from this direction. Vomer. All right, here we see a beautiful mandible. This is your lower jaw. The entire structure is the mandible. The hole associated with the mandible is the mental foramen. You've got two structures associated that are articulation points for muscle on the skull. You have the coronoid process and the mandibular condyle. In addition, we have what we refer to as the mandibular ramus. Ramus means arm. Picture the crook in your elbow. The ramus is essentially the region from about here to about here. So it's going to be that portion or the bend of the bone is the mandibular ramus. This contains your lower teeth. The mandible is your lower jaw. And of course, when we look at all these bits and pieces of the skull, we recognize that anatomy is awesome. All right, good luck, you guys.